psychoanalyst out there, and that would be a good time to get your pens ready. Because strangely, I feel like talking about dreams. Now, dreams, of course, are something that come and go. Most people don't remember them, especially as you get older. My understanding of dreams is that their function is as a means of helping the brain perform loose affiliations. Or is that loose associations? It's one or the other. And are a means of helping organize your memories and all this other stuff. So that's cool. That's important. We need that. Some people, of course, have more ability to influence their dreams than others. And that's more or less what, I'm, what I want to talk about. So, I got home from work at 3 a.m. the other day, went to bed about 5 a.m., 7 a.m., my alarm clock goes off. I had set it so that, you know, I'd be up in time to see my roommate off to work and we can have breakfast together and then I was planning on going back to bed, quite honestly. Who wouldn't? It's hard to live on two hours of sleep. So I wake up and I walk into the living room and I sit down on my couch. Next thing I know, dream starts. I am in what looks like the Rosenkreuz Temple in Spain, although it has the Sistine Chapel roof, for something like a um, book fair. In the booth alongside me is Wes Craven, 1990-ish. Because I don't know what he looks like today. I recognize him from his late 90s movies. And hell, he's one of my favorite artists anyway. Why not have him in my dreams, right? Weird celebrity appearance. We're surrounded by people and Wes is chatting with me. We're talking about making an ad- a film adaptation of one of my books. I think he was probably talking about my second book because he made reference to the character of Marx, who doesn't appear until book two. And somebody hands me a book, I open it up, I go to sign it, and my pen starts flickering in my hand and it changes shape. I close the book, I put it down, and I get mad. I look at Wes Craven, and I say, God damn it, you just ruined this experience for me. I'm a, lo- I'm a semi-lucid dreamer, so I now am fully aware that I passed out while I was cooking breakfast. And Wes shakes his hands at me and says, calm down Dustin, I'm sorry, we can fix this. I look upon the idea that I'm basically arguing with myself at this point. I say, no, because you did this, I don't care what the story is you were trying to tell me, you've just given me free reign to do this. Now, now, normally when I start to turn loose in one of my dreams, I just get bored of the scenario and I fly off into the sky and I start treating clouds like they're clay and shaping them and then spinning the stars like they're a discus and playing connect the dots. This time, no, this time I went straight on Avatar. We're talking Domenicura action here. I start blowing chairs to pieces by looking at them. The windows shatter. The mirror across the ceiling starts dancing. Everybody in the room starts just turning into smoke. And I love it. I electively crooked my dream that was fine and dandy. And I went, I t- went and turned into a megalomaniac and started shredding my dream to pieces. My dream was terrified of me, and I found it amazing. So, Wes steps in front of me, and blinks in and out of place, changing shape. Suddenly, he appears to be a 
pro he appears to be uh something like Sarah Connor from the Terminator dressed up like Seven of Nine from Star Trek with magenta hair with a Hungarian accent. And the woman who previously had been Wes Craven reaches out to kiss me and says, How about we fix this? TNA is great. I would love some TNA. But I have to look up at her and say, you know, this has been fun. But I'm guessing that it's a quarter after eight right about now. And I had to turn the oven off. And I snap awake. And I was absolutely right. Take a minute to analyze that and tell me what you think happened. It ought to be a lot of fun.